Buddhist meditation is the practice of meditation in Buddhism. The closest words for meditation in the classical languages of Buddhism are bhavana, mental development, and jhana, dhyana, mental training resulting in a calm and luminous mind. Buddhists pursue meditation as part of the path toward liberation, awakening, and nirvana, and includes a variety of meditation techniques, most notably asubha bhavana, reflections on repulsiveness. Reflection on pratityasamutpada dependent origination, sati mindfulness and anasati recollections, including anapanasati breath meditation, dhyana developing an alert and luminous mind, and the brahma viharas loving kindness and compassion. These techniques aim to develop equanimity and sati mindfulness, samadhi concentration, c, q, samatha tranquility and vipassana insight, and are also said to lead to abhijña supramundane powers. These meditation techniques are preceded by and combined with practices which aid this development, such as moral restraint and right effort to develop wholesome states of mind. While these techniques are used across Buddhist schools, there is also significant diversity. In the Theravada tradition, reflecting developments in early Buddhism, meditation techniques are classified as either samatha calming the mind and vipassana gaining insight. Chinese and Japanese Buddhism preserved a wide range of meditation techniques, which go back to early Buddhism, most notably Sarvastivada. In Tibetan Buddhism, deity yoga includes visualizations, which precede the realization of sunyata emptiness. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The closest words for meditation in the classical languages of Buddhism are bhavana mental development and jhana dhyana. Topic: <inaudible> Pre-Buddhist India. Modern Buddhist studies has attempted to reconstruct the meditation practices of pre-sectarian early Buddhism mainly through philological and text critical methods using the early canonical texts according to Indologist Johannes Bronckhorst. The teaching of the Buddha as presented in the early canon contains a number of contradictions, presenting a variety of methods that do not always agree with each other, containing views and practices that are sometimes accepted and sometimes rejected. These contradictions are due to the influence of non Buddhist traditions on early Buddhism. One example of these non Buddhist meditative methods found in the early sources is outlined by Bronckhorst. The Vitakasanthana Sutta of the Majjhima Nikaya and its parallels in Chinese translation recommend the practicing monk to restrain his thought with his mind, to coerce and torment it. Exactly the same words are used elsewhere in the Pali Canon in the Mahasakaka Sutta, Bodhirajakumara Sutta and Sangharava Sutta in order to describe the futile attempts of the Buddha before his enlightenment to reach liberation after the manner of the Jainas. According to Bronckhorst, such practices which are based on a suppression of activity are not authentically Buddhist, but were later adopted from the Jains by the Buddhist community. The two major traditions of meditative practice in pre-Buddhist India were the Jain ascetic practices and the various Vedic Brahmanical practices. There is still much debate in Buddhist studies regarding how much influence these two traditions had on the development of early Buddhist meditation. The early Buddhist texts mention that the Gautama trained under two teachers known as Alara Kalama and Yudhika Ramaputta, both of them taught formless jhanas or mental absorptions, a key practice of proper Buddhist meditation. Alexander Wynne considers these figures historical persons associated with the doctrines of the early Upanishads. Other practices which the Buddha undertook have been associated with the Jain ascetic tradition by the Indologist Johannes Bronckhorst including extreme fasting and a forceful meditation without breathing." According to the early texts, the Buddha rejected the more extreme Jain ascetic practices in favor of the Middle Way. <laughs> Pre-sectarian Buddhism Early Buddhism, as it existed before the development of various schools, is called pre-sectarian Buddhism. Its meditation techniques are described in the Pali Canon and the Chinese Agamas. Topic. Preparatory practices Meditation and contemplation are preceded by preparatory practices. As described in the Noble Eightfold Path, right view leads to leaving the household life and becoming a wandering monk. Sila, morality, comprises the rules for right conduct. Sense restraint and right effort, c, q, the four right efforts, are important preparatory practices. 
Sense restraint means controlling the response to sensual perceptions, not giving in to lust and aversion but simply noticing the objects of perception as they appear. Right effort aims to prevent the arising of unwholesome states, and to generate wholesome states. By following these preparatory steps and practices, the mind becomes set, almost naturally, for the practice of dhyana. Asubha bhavana reflection on unattractiveness. Asubha bhavana is reflection on the foul unattractiveness Pali, asubha. It includes two practices, namely cemetery contemplations, and patikalamanasikara reflections on repulsiveness. Patikalamanasikara is a Buddhist meditation whereby 31 parts of the body are contemplated in a variety of ways. In addition to developing sati mindfulness and samadhi concentration, dhyana, this form of meditation is considered to be conducive to overcoming desire and lust. Anasati recollections. Anasati Pali, Sanskrit, anumriti means recollection, contemplation, remembrance, meditation, and mindfulness. It refers to specific meditative or devotional practices, such as recollecting the sublime qualities of the Buddha or Anapanasati mindfulness of breathing, which lead to mental tranquility and abiding joy. In various contexts, the Pali literature and Sanskrit Mahayana sutras emphasize and identify different enumerations of recollections. <laughs> Sati, smrti mindfulness, and Satipatthana establishment of mindfulness. An important quality to be cultivated by a Buddhist meditator is mindfulness sati. Mindfulness is a polyvalent term which refers to remembering, recollecting and bearing in mind. It also relates to remembering the teachings of the Buddha and knowing how these teachings relate to one's experiences. The Buddhist texts mention different kinds of mindfulness practice. According to Bronckhorst, there were originally two kinds of mindfulness. Observations of the positions of the body and the four satipathanas, the establishment of mindfulness, which constituted formal meditation. Bhikkhu Sujato and Bronckhorst both argue that the mindfulness of the positions of the body wasn't originally part of the four satipathana formula, but was later added to it in some texts, in the Pali Satipathana Sutta and its parallels as well as numerous other early Buddhist texts. The Buddha identifies four foundations for mindfulness satipathanas, the body including the four elements, the parts of the body, and death, feelings vedana, mind sata, and phenomena or principles dhammas, such as the five hindrances and the seven factors of enlightenment. Different early texts give different enumerations of these four mindfulness practices. Meditation on these subjects is said to develop insight. According to Zhegosh Polak, the four upasana have been misunderstood by the developing Buddhist tradition, including Theravada, to refer to four different foundations. According to Polak, the four upasana do not refer to four different foundations of which one should be aware, but are an alternate description of the jhanas, describing how the samskaras are tranquilized. The six sense bases which one needs to be aware of kayanupasana. Contemplation on vedanas, which arise with the contact between the senses and their objects vedananupasana. The altered states of mind to which this practice leads chitanupasana. The development from the five hindrances to the seven factors of enlightenment dhammanupasana. Topic: Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing. Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, is a core meditation practice in Theravada, Tiantai and Chan traditions of Buddhism as well as a part of many mindfulness programs. In both ancient and modern times, Anapanasati by itself is likely the most widely used Buddhist method for contemplating bodily phenomena. The Anapanasati Sutta specifically concerns mindfulness of inhalation and exhalation, as a part of paying attention to one's body in quietude, and recommends the practice of Anapanasati meditation as a means of cultivating the seven factors of enlightenment sati, mindfulness, dhamma vikaya, analysis, viriya, persistence, which leads to pity, rapture, then to passity, serenity, which in turn leads to samadhi concentration and then to upekka equanimity. Finally, the Buddha taught that, with these factors developed in this progression, the practice of anapanasati would lead to release Pali, vimutti, Sanskrit moksa from dukkha suffering, in which one realizes nibbana. Dhyana, jhana 
Many scholars of early Buddhism, such as Vedder, Bronkhorst and Anilayo, see the practice of jhana Sanskrit, dhyana as central to the meditation of early Buddhism. According to Bronkhorst, the oldest Buddhist meditation practice are the four dhyanas, which lead to the destruction of the asavas as well as the practice of mindfulness sati. According to Vedder, the practice of dhyana may have constituted the core liberating practice of early Buddhism, since in this state all pleasure and pain had waned. According to Vedder, p probably the word immortality Amata was used by the Buddha for the first interpretation of this experience and not the term cessation of suffering that belongs to the Four Noble Truths. The Buddha did not achieve the experience of salvation by discerning the Four Noble Truths and or other data. But his experience must have been of such a nature that it could bear the interpretation, achieving immortality. Alexander Wynne agrees that the Buddha taught a kind of meditation exemplified by the four dhyanas, but argues that the Buddha adopted these from the Brahmin teachers Alara Kalama and Yudhika Ramaputta, though he did not interpret them in the same Vedic cosmological way and rejected their Vedic goal union with Brahman. The Buddha, according to Wynne, radically transformed the practice of dhyana which he learned from these Brahmins which consisted of the adaptation of the old yogic techniques to the practice of mindfulness and attainment of insight. For Wynne, this idea that liberation required not just meditation but an act of insight, was radically different than the Brahmanic meditation, where it was thought that the yogin must be without any mental activity at all, like a log of wood. Four rupa jhanas Qualities The Suttapitaka and the Agamas describe four rupa jhanas. Rupa refers to the material realm, in a neutral stance, as different form the Kama realm lust, desire, and the Arupa realm, non -material realm The qualities associated with the first four jhanas are as follows First dhyana, the first dhyana can be entered when one is secluded from sensuality and unskillful qualities. There is pity, rapture, and non-sensual sukha, pleasure, as the result of seclusion, while vitarka vikara, discursive thought, Continues, second dhyana, there is pity, rapture, and non-sensual sukha, pleasure, as the result of concentration, samadhi g, born of samadhi, ekagata, unification of awareness, free from vitarka, directed thought, and vikara, evaluation, and inner tranquility. Third dhyana, upeka, equanimous, mindful, and alert, senses pleasure with the body. Fourth dhyana, upekasada parasuti, purity of equanimity and mindfulness, neither pleasure nor pain. Topic: <inaudible> Interpretation. According to Richard Gombrich, the sequence of the four rupa jhanas describes two different cognitive states. Alexander Wynne further explains that the dhyana scheme is poorly understood. According to Wynne, words expressing the inculcation of awareness, such as sati, sampahano, and upeka, are mistranslated or understood as particular factors of meditative states, whereas they refer to a particular way of perceiving the sense objects. Pollock notes that the qualities of the jhanas resemble the bojhanga, the seven factors of awakening, arguing that both sets describe the same essential practice. Pollock further notes, elaborating on Vedder, that the onset of the first dhyana is described as a quite natural process, due to the preceding efforts to restrain the senses and the nurturing of wholesome states. Upeka, equanimity, which is perfected in the fourth dhyana, is one of the four Brahma Vihara. While the commentarial tradition downplayed the Brahma Viharas, Gombrich notes that the Buddhist usage of the Brahma Vihara, originally referred to an awakened state of mind, and a concrete attitude toward other beings which was equal to living with Brahman, here and now. The later tradition took those descriptions too literally, linking them to cosmology and understanding them as living with Brahman, by rebirth in the Brahma world. According to Gombrich, the Buddha taught that kindness, what Christians tend to call love, was a way to salvation. Arupas <inaudible> <inaudible> In addition to the four rupajanas, there are also meditative attainments which were later called by the tradition the arapajanas, though the early texts do not use the term dhyana for them, calling them ayatana dimension, sphere, base. They are the dimension of infinite space akasanankayatana, skt. akasanankayatana 
The dimension of infinite consciousness The dimension of infinite nothingness the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception Naroda samapati, also called sanya vedayata naroda, extinction of feeling and perception, these formless jhanas may have been incorporated from non-Buddhist traditions. <laughs> Jhana and insight Various early sources mention the attainment of insight after having achieved jhana. In the Mahasakaka Sutta, dhyana is followed by insight into the Four Noble Truths. The mention of the Four Noble Truths as constituting liberating insight is probably a later addition. Discriminating insight into transiency as a separate path to liberation was a later development, under pressure of developments in Indian religious thinking, which saw liberating insight as essential to liberation. This may also have been due to an over-literal interpretation by later scholastics of the terminology used by the Buddha, and to the problems involved with the practice of dhyana, and the need to develop an easier method. Brahmavihara Another important meditation in the early sources are the four Brahmavihara divine abodes which are said to lead to setovamati, a liberation of the mind. The four Brahmavihara are Loving kindness Pali, Metta, Sanskrit, Maitri, is active goodwill towards all. Compassion Pali and Sanskrit, Karuna, results from Metta, it is identifying the suffering of others as one's own. Empathetic joy Pali and Sanskrit, Mudita, is the feeling of joy because others are happy, even if one did not contribute to it, it is a form of sympathetic joy. Equanimity Pali, Upeka, Sanskrit, Upeksa, is even-mindedness and serenity, treating everyone impartially. According to Analayo, the effect of cultivating the Brahmaviharas as a liberation of the mind finds illustration in a simile which describes a conch blower who is able to make himself heard in all directions. This illustrates how the Brahmaviharas are to be developed as a boundless radiation in all directions, as a result of which they cannot be overruled by other more limited karma. The practice of the four divine abodes can be seen as a way to overcome ill will and sensual desire and to train in the quality of deep concentration. Samadhi. Early Buddhism Traditionally, 18 schools of Buddhism are said to have developed after the time of the Buddha. The Sarvastivada school was the most influential, but the Theravada is the only school that still exists. Samatha and Vipassana The Buddha is said to have identified two paramount mental qualities that arise from wholesome meditative practice. Serenity, or tranquility, Pali, Samatha, Sanskrit, Samadhi, which steadies, composes, unifies, and concentrates the mind. Insight, Pali, Vipassana, which enables one to see, explore, and discern. Formations. Conditioned phenomena based on the five aggregates. In the Pali Canon, the Buddha never mentions independent samatha and vipassana meditation practices, instead, samatha and vipassana are two qualities of mind, to be developed through meditation. Nonetheless, some meditation practices such as contemplation of a kasina object favor the development of samatha, others are conducive to the development of vipassana such as contemplation of the aggregates, while others such as mindfulness of breathing are classically used for developing both mental qualities in the four ways to arahantship sutta and 4.170 ven Ananda reports that people attain arahantship using serenity and insight in one of three ways. They develop serenity and then insight Pali, Samatha Pubangamam Vipassanam They develop insight and then serenity Pali, Vipassana Pubangamam Samatham They develop serenity and insight in tandem Pali, Samatha Vipassanam Yuganatam as in, for instance, obtaining the first jhana, and then seeing in the associated aggregates the three marks of existence, before proceeding to the second jhana, while the Nikayas state that the pursuit of vipassana can precede the pursuit of samatha, according to the Burmese vipassana movement vipassana be based upon the achievement of stabilizing access concentration Pali, Upakara Samadhi
Through the meditative development of serenity, one is able to suppress obscuring hindrances, and, with the suppression of the hindrances, it is through the meditative development of insight that one gains liberating wisdom. Moreover, the Buddha is said to have extolled serenity and insight as conduits for attaining nibbana Pali, SKT, nirvana, the unconditioned state is in the Kimsuka Tree Sutta, SN 35.245, where the Buddha provides an elaborate metaphor in which serenity and insight are the swift pair of messengers who deliver the message of nibbana via the Noble Eightfold Path. In the threefold training, samatha is part of samadhi, the eight limb of the threefold path, together with zati, mindfulness. Sarvastivada The now defunct Sarvastivada tradition, and its related sub schools like the Sautrantika and the Vaibhasika, were the most influential Buddhists in North India and Central Asia. Their highly complex Abhidharma treatises, such as the Mahavibhasa, the Sravakapum, and the Abhidharmakosha, contain new developments in meditative theory which had a major influence on meditation as practiced in East Asian Mahayana and Tibetan Buddhism. Individuals known as Yogacaras yoga practitioners were influential in the development of Sarvastivada meditation praxis, and some modern scholars such as Yin Shun believe they were also influential in the development of Mahayana meditation. The Dhyana Sutras Chinese, Chan Jing or Meditation Summaries Chinese, Chan Yao are a group of early Buddhist meditation texts which are mostly based on the Yogacara meditation teachings of the Sarvastivada school of Kashmir circa 1st-4th centuries CE, which focus on the concrete details of the meditative practice of the Yogacarans of northern Gandhara and Kashmir. Most of the texts only survive in Chinese and were key works in the development of the Buddhist meditation practices of Chinese Buddhism. According to K.L. Dhammajati, the Sarvastivada meditation practitioner begins with samatha meditations, divided into the five-fold mental stillings, each being recommended as useful for particular personality types. Contemplation on the impure asubhabhavana, for the greedy type person. Meditation on loving-kindness for the hateful type. Contemplation on condition co-arising, for the deluded type. Contemplation on the division of the dhatis, for the conceited type Mindfulness of breathing for the distracted type, contemplation of the impure, and mindfulness of breathing, was particularly important in this system, they were known as the gateways to immortality the Sarvastivada system practiced breath meditation using the same 16 aspect model used in the Anapanasati Sutta, but also introduced a unique 6 aspect system which consists of Counting the breaths up to 10 Following the breath as it enters through the nose throughout the body Fixing the mind on the breath Observing the breath at various locations Modifying is related to the practice of the four applications of mindfulness and Purifying stage of the arising of insight, this six-fold breathing meditation method was influential in East Asia, and expanded upon by the Chinese Tiantai meditation master Zhiyi. After the practitioner has achieved tranquility, Sarvastivada Abhidharma then recommends one proceeds to practice the four applications of mindfulness in two ways. First they contemplate each specific characteristic of the four applications of mindfulness, and then they contemplate all four collectively. In spite of this systematic division of samatha and vipassana, the Sarvastivada Abhidharmikas held that the two practices are not mutually exclusive. The Mahavibhasa for example remarks that, regarding the six aspects of mindfulness of breathing, there is no fixed rule here. All may come under samatha or all may come under vipassana. The Sarvastivada Abhidharmikas also held that attaining the dhyanas was necessary for the development of insight and wisdom. Theravada Sutta Pitaka and early commentaries The oldest material of the Theravada tradition on meditation can be found in the Pali Nikayas, and in texts such as the Patisambhidamagga which provide commentary to meditation suttas like the Anapanasati Sutta. Buddhaghosa An early Theravada meditation manual is the Vimittimagga, Path of Freedom, 1st or 2nd century. 
The most influential presentation though, is that of the 5th century Visuddhimagga path of, purification of Buddhaghosa, which seems to have been influenced by the earlier Vimittimagga in his presentation. The Visuddhimagga's doctrine reflects Theravada Abhidhamma scholasticism, which includes several innovations and interpretations not found in the earliest discourses suttas of the Buddha. Buddhaghosa's Visuddhimagga includes non-canonical instructions on Theravada meditation, such as ways of guarding the mental image nimitta", which point to later developments in Theravada meditation. The text is centered around Kasina meditation, a form of concentration meditation in which the mind is focused on a mental object. According to Thanissaro Bhikkhu, T he text then tries to fit all other meditation methods into the mold of Kasina practice, so that they too give rise to countersigns, but even by its own admission, breath meditation does not fit well into the mold. In its emphasis on Kasina meditation, the Visuddhimagga departs from the Pali Canon, in which dhyana is the central meditative practice, indicating that what jhana means in the commentaries is something quite different from what it means in the canon. The Visuddhimagga describes forty meditation subjects, most of being being described in the early texts. Buddhaghosa advises that, for the purpose of developing concentration and consciousness, a person should apprehend from among the forty meditation subjects one that suits his own temperament, with the advice of a good friend Kalyana who is knowledgeable in the different meditation subjects ch. 3, section 28. Buddhaghosa subsequently elaborates on the forty meditation subjects as follows ch. 3, section 104, chs. IV 11, Ten kasinas, earth, water, fire, air, blue, yellow, red, white, light, and limited space. Ten kinds of foulness. The bloated, the livid, the festering, the cut up, the nod, the scattered, the hacked and scattered, the bleeding, the worm infested, and a skeleton. Ten recollections, buddhanasati, the dhamma, the sangha, virtue, generosity, the virtues of deities, death see the upajathana sutta, the body, the breath see anapanasati, and peace see nibbana. Four divine abodes, metta, karuna, mudita, and upekka. Four immaterial states, boundless space, boundless perception, nothingness, and neither perception nor non-perception. One perception of repulsiveness in nutriment. One defining that is the four elements when one overlays buddhaghosa's 40 meditative subjects for the development of concentration with the buddha's foundations of mindfulness three practices are found to be in common breath meditation foulness meditation which is similar to the satipatthana sutta's cemetery contemplations and to contemplation of bodily repulsiveness and contemplation of the four elements according to pali commentaries breath meditation can lead one to the equanimous fourth jhanic absorption Contemplation of foulness can lead to the attainment of the first jhana, and contemplation of the four elements culminates in pre-jhana access concentration. Topic: <inaudible> Contemporary Theravada. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Vipassana and or Samadha. The role of samatha in Buddhist practice, and the exact meaning of samadha, are points of contention and investigation in contemporary Theravada and Western vipassanan. Burmese vipassana teachers have tended to disregard samadha as unnecessary, while Thai teachers see samatha and vipassana as intertwined. The exact meaning of samadha is also not clear, and Westerners have started to question the receive wisdom on this. While samatha is usually equated with the jhanas in the commentarial tradition, scholars and practitioners have pointed out that jhana is more than a narrowing of the focus of the mind. While the second jhana may be characterized by samadhi g, born of concentration, the first jhana sets in quite naturally as a result of sense restraint, while the third and fourth jhana are characterized by mindfulness and equanimity. Sati, sense restraint and mindfulness are necessary preceding practices, while insight may mark the point where one enters the stream of development which results in vimukti release according to analayo the jhanas are crucial meditative states which lead to the abandonment of hindrances such as lust and aversion however they are not sufficient for the attainment of liberating insight some early texts also warn meditators against becoming attached to them and therefore forgetting the need for the further practice of insight 
According to Analayo, either one undertakes such insight contemplation while still being in the attainment, or else one does so retrospectively, after having emerged from the absorption itself but while still being in a mental condition close to it in concentrative depth. The position that insight can be practiced from within jhana, according to the early texts, is endorsed by Gunaratna, Krangal and Shankaman. Analayo meanwhile argues, that the evidence from the early texts suggest that Contemplation of the impermanent nature of the mental constituents of an absorption takes place before or on emerging from the attainment. Arbel has argued that insight precedes the practice of jhana. Topic: <inaudible> Vipassana movement. Particularly influential from the 20th century onward has been the Burmese Vipassana movement, especially the New Burmese Method or Vipassana School. Approach to Samatha and Vipassana developed by Mingan Sayadaw and U Narada and popularized by Mahasi Sayadaw. Here Samatha is considered an optional but not necessary component of the practice. Vipassana is possible without it. Another Burmese method, derived from Ledi Sayadaw via Ba Kin and S N Goenka, takes a similar approach. Other Burmese traditions popularized in the West, notably that of Pa Ak Sayadaw, uphold the emphasis on Samatha explicit in the commentarial tradition of the Visuddhimagga. These Burmese traditions have been influential on Western Theravada-oriented teachers, notably Joseph Goldstein, Sharon Salzberg and Jack Kornfield. There are also other less well-known Burmese meditation methods, such as the system developed by U Vimala, which focuses on knowledge of dependent origination and Chitanupasana mindfulness of the mind. Likewise, Sayadaw U Tijaniya's method also focuses on mindfulness of the mind. <laughs> Thai forest tradition Also influential is the Thai forest tradition deriving from Moon Bioradatta and popularized by Ajahn Cha, which, in contrast, stresses the inseparability of the two practices, and the essential necessity of both practices. Other noted practitioners in this tradition include Ajahn Thait and Ajahn Maha Bua, among others. There are other forms of Thai Buddhist meditation associated with particular teachers, including Buddhadasa Bhikkhu's presentation of Anapanasati, Ajahn Lee's breath meditation method which influenced his American student Thanissaro and the dynamic meditation of Luangpur Thi and Chittasubho. <laughs> other forms There are other less mainstream forms of Theravada meditation practiced in Thailand which include the Vijja Dhammakaya meditation developed by Luang Pu Sodh Kandasaro and the meditation of former Supreme Patriarch Suk Kai Thuyan Newell notes that these two forms of modern Thai meditation share certain features in common with tantric practices such as the use of visualizations and centrality of maps of the body. A less common type of meditation is practiced in Cambodia and Laos by followers of Boran Kamathana ancient practices tradition. This form of meditation includes the use of mantras and visualizations. Topic: <laughs> Mahayana Buddhism Mahayana Buddhism includes numerous schools of practice, which each draw upon various Buddhist sutras, philosophical treatises, and commentaries. Accordingly, each school has its own meditation methods for the purpose of developing samadhi and prajna, with the goal of ultimately attaining enlightenment. Nevertheless, each has its own emphasis, mode of expression, and philosophical outlook. In his classic book on meditation of the various Chinese Buddhist traditions, Charles Luck writes, The Buddha Dharma is useless if it is not put into actual practice, because if we do not have personal experience of it, it will be alien to us and we will never awaken to it in spite of our book learning. Nan Huijin echoed similar sentiments about the importance of meditation by remarking, Intellectual reasoning is just another spinning of the sixth consciousness, whereas the practice of meditation is the true entry into the Dharma. Initially, Mahayana Buddhists in India and East Asia practiced meditation in a similar way to that of the Sarvastivada school outlined above. 
One of the major Indian Mahayana treatises on meditation practice is the Yogacara Bhumi compiled circa late 4th century, a compendium of texts which includes within it the Sarvastivada Sravakapum c. 2nd 3rd century as well as the Mahayana Bodhisattva Bhumi c. 3rd century, the works of the Chinese translator and Shigao, and Shigao 147-168 CE are some of the earliest meditation texts used by Chinese Buddhism and their focus is mindfulness of breathing Anubana and Nabanna these texts are known as the Dhyana Sutras. The Chinese translator and scholar Kumarajiva transmitted a meditation treatise titled The Sutra Concerned with Samadhi in Sitting Meditation, Zuo Chan San Mei Jing T.614, K.991, which teaches the Sarvastivada system of five fold mental stillings. <laughs> Pure Land School Topic. Mindfulness of Amitabha Buddha In Pure Land Buddhism, repeating the name of Amitabha is traditionally a form of mindfulness of the Buddha This term was translated into Chinese as Nianfo Chinese, Nianfu by which it is popularly known in English. The practice is described as calling the Buddha to mind by repeating his name, to enable the practitioner to bring all his or her attention upon that Buddha samadhi. This may be done vocally or mentally, and with or without the use of Buddhist prayer beads. Those who practice this method often commit to a fixed set of repetitions per day, often from 50,000 to over 500,000. According to tradition, the second patriarch of the Pure Land School, Shandao, is said to have practiced this day and night without interruption, each time emitting light from his mouth. Therefore, he was bestowed with the title, Great Master of Light. Da Shi Guang Ming by Emperor Gaozong of Tang, Gaozong in addition, in Chinese Buddhism there is a related practice called the Dual Path of Chan and Pure Land Cultivation, which is also called the Dual Path of Emptiness and Existence. As taught by Venerable Nan Huijin, the name of Amitabha Buddha is recited slowly, and the mind is emptied out after each repetition. When idle thoughts arise, the phrase is repeated again to clear them. With constant practice, the mind is able to remain peacefully in emptiness, culminating in the attainment of samadhi. Topic. Pure Land Rebirth Dharani Repeating the Pure Land Rebirth Dharani is another method in Pure Land Buddhism. Similar to the mindfulness practice of repeating the name of Amitabha Buddha, this dharani is another method of meditation and recitation in Pure Land Buddhism. The repetition of this dharani is said to be very popular among traditional Chinese Buddhists. It is traditionally preserved in Sanskrit, and it is said that when a devotee succeeds in realizing singleness of mind by repeating a mantra, its true and profound meaning will be clearly revealed. Namo Amitabhaya Tathagataya Tadiatha Amtabhavi Amrasambhavi Amravikran Amtavakratagamini Gagana Kirtichare Svaha Topic. Visualization methods Another practice found in Pure Land Buddhism is meditative contemplation and visualization of Amitabha, his attendant bodhisattvas, and the Pure Land. The basis of this is found in the Amitayardhyana Sutra, Amitabha Meditation Sutra in which the Buddha describes to Queen Vedihi the practices of thirteen progressive visualization methods, corresponding to the attainment of various levels of rebirth in the Pure Land. Visualization practices for Amitabha are popular among esoteric Buddhist sects, such as Japanese Shingon Buddhism. <laughs> Chan, Zen Chan is the Chinese rendering of dhyana, and started as a specialized branch of Buddhist teachings, the others being sutra and vinaya. As Chan developed as an independent school, it developed its own narratives and theoretical understandings. In China, the word dhyana was originally transliterated with Chinese, chan na pinyin, chana and shortened to just pinyin, chan in common usage. The word chan became the designation for Chan Buddhism Korean son, Zen. Topic. Origins Dhyana is a central aspect of Buddhist practice in Chan, necessary for progress on the path and true entry into the Dharma. 
The word for, and the practice of Diana entered into Chinese through the translations of Anshigao, Florida, c. 148–180 CE, and Kumarajiva 334–413 CE, who translated the Diana Sutras, which were influential early meditation texts mostly based on Yogacara meditation teachings of the Sarvastivada school of Kashmir circa 1st–4th centuries CE, while Diana in a strict sense refers to the four Dianas, in Chinese Buddhism Diana may refer to various kinds of meditation techniques and their preparatory practices, which are necessary to practice dhyana. The five main types of meditation in the Dhyana Sutras are Anapanasati mindfulness of breathing, Patikalamanasikara meditation contemplation of the impurities of the body, loving-kindness Maitri meditation, the contemplation on the twelve links of Pratityasamutpada, and the contemplation on the Buddha's thirty-two characteristics. Mindfulness. Observing the breath During sitting meditation, practitioners usually assume a position such as the lotus position, half-lotus, Burmese, or yoga postures, using the dhyana mudra. To regulate the mind, awareness is directed towards counting or watching the breath or by bringing that awareness to the energy center below the navel see also Anapanasati. Often, a square or round cushion placed on a padded mat is used to sit on, in some other cases, a chair may be used. This practice may simply be called sitting dhyana, which is zuokan zuo chan in Chinese, and zazen zuo chan in Japanese, jawasian zuo chan in Korean. Topic. Observing the mind in the Soto school of Zen, meditation with no objects, anchors, or content, is the primary form of practice. The meditator strives to be aware of the stream of thoughts, allowing them to arise and pass away without interference. Considerable textual, philosophical, and phenomenological justification of this practice can be found throughout Dogen's Shobhagenzo, as for example in the Principles of Zazen and the Universally Recommended Instructions for Zazen. In the Japanese language, this practice is called shikantaza. Topic: Insight. Topic: Pointing to the nature of the mind. According to Charles Luck, in the earliest traditions of Chan, there was no fixed method or formula for teaching meditation, and all instructions were simply heuristic methods to point to the true nature of the mind, also known as Buddha nature. According to Luck, this method is referred to as the mind dharma, and exemplified in the story of Sakyamuni Buddha holding up a flower silently, and Mahakasyapa smiling as he understood. A traditional formula of this is, Chan points directly to the human mind, to enable people to see their true nature and become Buddhas. <laughs> Koan practice At the beginning of the Song dynasty, practice with the koan method became popular, whereas others practiced silent illumination. This became the source of some differences in practice between the Linji and Kaodong schools. A koan, literally, public case, is a story or dialogue, describing an interaction between a Zen master and a student. These anecdotes give a demonstration of the master's insight. Koans emphasize the non-conceptional insight that the Buddhist teachings are pointing to. Koans can be used to provoke the great doubt and test a student's progress in Zen practice. Koan inquiry may be practiced during zazen, sitting meditation, kinhin, walking meditation, and throughout all the activities of daily life. Koan practice is particularly emphasized by the Japanese Rinzai school, but it also occurs in other schools or branches of Zen depending on the teaching line. The Zen student's mastery of a given koan is presented to the teacher in a private interview, referred to in Japanese as dokusen, dukendaisen, daikin, or sanzen. While there is no unique answer to a koan, practitioners are expected to demonstrate their understanding of the koan and of Zen through their responses. The teacher may approve or disapprove of the answer and guide the student in the right direction. The interaction with a Zen teacher is central in Zen, but makes Zen practice also vulnerable to misunderstanding and exploitation. Tiantai school Chinese Tiantai Samatha Vipassana 
In China it has been traditionally held that the meditation methods used by the Tiantai school are the most systematic and comprehensive of all. In addition to its doctrinal basis in Indian Buddhist texts, the Tiantai school also emphasizes use of its own meditation texts which emphasize the principles of Samatha and Vipassana. Of these texts, Jiyi's Concise Samathavipassana, Shao Ji Guan Mohe Zigan, Mo He Ji Guan Sanskrit Mahasamathavipassana, and Six Subtle Dharma Gates Lu Miao Fa Men are the most widely read in China. Rujin Wu identifies the work Maha Samatha Vipassana of Jiyi as the seminal meditation text of the Tiantai school. Regarding the functions of Samatha and Vipassana in meditation, Jiyi writes in his work Concise Samatha Vipassana, the attainment of nirvana is realizable by many methods whose essentials do not go beyond the practice of samatha and vipassana. Samatha is the first step to untie all bonds and vipassana is essential to root out delusion. Samatha provides nourishment for the preservation of the knowing mind, and vipassana is the skillful art of promoting spiritual understanding. Samatha is the unsurpassed cause of samadhi, while vipassana begets wisdom. The Tiantai school also places a great emphasis on anapanasmirti, or mindfulness of breathing, in accordance with the principles of samatha and vipassana. Zhiyi classifies breathing into four main categories, panting, chuan unhurried breathing, feng deep and quiet breathing, qi and stillness or rest. Shi Zhiyi holds that the first three kinds of breathing are incorrect, while the fourth is correct, and that the breathing should reach stillness and rest. Zhiyi also outlines four kinds of samadhi in his Mohe Zigan, and ten modes of practicing vipassana. <inaudible> Esoteric practices in Japan One of the adaptations by the Japanese Tendai school was the introduction of mikkyo esoteric practices into Buddhism, which was later named Taimitsu by Ennin. Eventually, according to Tendai Taimitsu doctrine, the esoteric rituals came to be considered of equal importance with the exoteric teachings of the Lotus Sutra. Therefore, by chanting mantras, maintaining mudras, or performing certain meditations, one is able to see that the sense experiences are the teachings of Buddha, have faith that one is inherently an enlightened being, and one can attain enlightenment within this very body. The origins of Taimitsu are found in China, similar to the lineage that Kakai encountered in his visit to Tang China and Saicho's disciples were encouraged to study under Kakai. Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism Vajrayana Buddhism includes all of the traditional forms of Mahayana meditation and also several unique forms. The central defining form of Vajrayana meditation is deity yoga, Devada yoga This involves the recitation of mantras, prayers and visualization of the yidam or deity along with the associated mandala of the deity's pure land. Advanced deity yoga involves imagining yourself as the deity. Other forms of meditation in Vajrayana include the Mahamudra and Dzogchen teachings, each taught by the Kagyu and Nyingma lineages of Tibetan Buddhism respectively. The goal of these is to familiarize oneself with the ultimate nature of mind which underlies all existence, the Dharmakaya. There are also other practices such as dream yoga, tumo, the yoga of the intermediate state at death, or bardo, sexual yoga and chad. The shared preliminary practices of Tibetan Buddhism are called nagandro, which involves visualization, mantra recitation, and many prostrations. Texts versus personal instruction While early Buddhist meditation techniques have been reconstructed by Theravada monks and by scholars, based on the Pali Canon and the Visuddhimagga, the development of meditation practice may essentially depend on personal instructions by a teacher. Therapeutic uses of meditation For a long time people have practiced meditation, based on Buddhist meditation principles, in order to affect mundane and worldly benefit. As such, mindfulness and other Buddhist meditation techniques are being advocated in the West by innovative psychologists and expert Buddhist meditation teachers such as Thich Nhat Hanh, Pema Chodron, Clive Sherlock, M. Y. A. Thwin, S. N. Goenka, John Kabat-Zinn, Jack Kornfield, Joseph Goldstein, Tara Brach, Alan Clements, and Sharon Salzberg, who have been widely attributed with playing a significant role in integrating the healing aspects of Buddhist meditation practices with the concept of psychological awareness, healing, and well-being. Being. 
Although mindfulness meditation has received the most research attention, loving-kindness and equanimity meditation are beginning to be used in a wide array of research in the fields of psychology and neuroscience. The accounts of meditative states in the Buddhist texts are in some regards free of dogma, so much so that the Buddhist scheme has been adopted by Western psychologists attempting to describe the phenomenon of meditation in general. However, it is exceedingly common to encounter the Buddha describing meditative states involving the attainment of such magical powers Sanskrit erdi, Pali iddhi, as the ability to multiply one's body into many and into one again, appear and vanish at will, pass through solid objects as if space, rise and sink in the ground as if in water, walking on water as if land, fly through the skies, touching anything at any distance even the moon or sun, and travel to other worlds like the world of Brahma with or without the body, among other things, and for this reason the whole of the Buddhist tradition may not be adaptable to a secular context, unless these magical powers are seen as metaphorical representations of powerful internal states that conceptual descriptions could not do justice to. Topic key terms topic See also topic Notes topic References topic Sources topic Printed sources topic Web sources topic Further reading Scholarly General Overview Gethin, Rupert 1998. The Foundations of Buddhism. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-289223-1 Scholarly Origins Stuart Fox, Martin 1989, Jhana and Buddhist Scholasticism, Journal of the International Association of Buddhist Studies, Vol. 12, 1988, No. 2 Bucknell, Robert South 1993, Reinterpreting the Jhanas, Journal of the International Association of Buddhist Studies, Vol. 16 No. 2, Winter 1993 Vedder, Tillman 1988, The Ideas and Meditative Practices of Early Buddhism, Brill Bronckhorst, Johannes 1993, The Two Traditions of Meditation in Ancient India, Mudalal Banarsidas Publ, Traditional Theravada Gunaratana, Hennepola 1988, The Jhanas in Theravada Buddhist Meditation We'll know 351-353. Kandy, Sri Lanka, Buddhist Publication Society. ISBN 955-240035-X, Burmese Vipassana Movement Nyanapanika Thera 1996, The Heart of Buddhist Meditation. York Beach, Me, Samuel Weiser, Inc. ISBN 0-87728-073-8. Hart, William 1987, The Art of Living, Vipassana Meditation, as taught by S.N. Goenka. Harperone. ISBN 0-06-063724-2 Thai Forest Tradition Bram, Ajahn 2006, Mindfulness, Bliss, and Beyond, A Meditator's Handbook. Somerville, M.A., Wisdom Publications. ISBN 0-86171-275-7 Thanissaro Bhikkhu, Wings to Awakening, a study of the factors taught by Gautama Buddha as being essential for awakening Gothar Thai traditions Buddhadasa, Heartwood of the Bodhi Trier Assessing Janakulai, Natalie 2008, Multiple Buddhist Modernisms, Jhana in Convert Theravada PDF, Pacific World 10-225-249 Shankman, Richard 2008, The Experience of Samadhi, an in-depth exploration of Buddhist Meditation, Shambhala Arbal, Karen 2017, Early Buddhist Meditation, The Four Jhanas as the Actualization of Insight, Taylor and Francis and Hakuen, Hakuen on Kensho. The Four Ways of Knowing. Shambhala Shunryu Suzuki, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind Kaplo, Philip 1989, The Three Pillars of Zen, Teaching, Practice and Enlightenment. N.Y., Anchor Books. ISBN 0 385 26093 8 Tibetan Buddhism. Sakyong. 2003. Turning the Mind into an Ally. NY, Riverhead Books. ISBN 1 57322 206 2. Buddhist Modernism. Jack Cornfield, A Path with Hart Goldstein, Joseph. 2003. One Dharma, The Emerging Western Buddhism. NY, HarperCollins Publishers. ISBN 0-06-251701-5 Mindfulness Kabat-Zinn, John 2001. Full Catastrophe Living. NY, Dell Publishing. ISBN 0-385-30312-2 External links Media related to Buddhist meditation at Wikimedia Commons Guided Meditations on the Lamrum, The Gradual Path to Enlightenment by Bhikshuni Tubton Chodron PDF file.